everybody. I just wanted to make sure everybody online um, can see the presentation and can hear me. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So, okay, so just a few housekeeping things for people in the room. Um, right outside here on the left, there are some bathrooms if something bad happens. We have two exits on the side of the doors. Um, we do have a room uh, for executive session. So if the council does want to uh, go into executive session for any reason, um, so Beth, one we'll, 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 of our staff here, will take all of the participants here to, to, to a separate room. And then I believe we also have a, a breakout room for the council members that are actually on the call. Um, so that is available. Um, Representative Bush is our, thank you for being the acting chair for today. Um, chair Hescott is on vacation. So, 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 so thank you so much for doing that. And then, um, who's also on vacation is George Lees, our DAG for TIF, our De Deputy Attorney General for TIF. Um, and Ken has graciously, Ken Feaster um, is sitting in for him. So if the council has any questions for guarding confidentiality or executive session or any type of legal thing, um, he is here to help as well. Um, and then I don't, th I, I think everybody is identified on the Zoom in person, um, but if you, if you're not, if you could just make sure that your name is showing up on the Zoom and not a telephone number, just so we can have our, our accurate minute, minute, minute. So, with that, I think that's all of the housekeeping things. So we're going to go ahead, go ahead and get started. Advance the slide, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we are going to go over the um, roll call for the council. So I just handed over to Re Representative Bush. And for the council members online, if you could please unmute yourself when your name is called, just so we get an accurate quorum number. Great, and, and first of all, welcome everyone. Um, I, I appreciate the opportunity, Philip, for Joe. He's amazing, so um, I will get started today. And let's start with roll call. Uh, Chair Representative Bill Bush, present. Senator Jack Walsh. Present. Dr. Cornelia Johnson. Present. Dr. Martin Nunley. Present. Uh, Ms. Mona Parikh. Present. And Mr. William Strickland. Present. Okay, having a quorum present, we can proceed for today. Um, I believe everyone should have received a copy of the minutes from the last meeting. Um, if everyone could take a minute and look at those, and if there is a motion to approve, I would appreciate that. So moved. Your second. 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 So we have a motion from Mr. Strickland, and I believe there is a second from Senator Walsh. So we'll go with that. Um, if you can, just indicate whether you approve it. Chair William Bush, yes. Senator Jack Walsh. Yes. Dr. Cornelia Johnson. Yes. Dr. Martin Nunley. Yes. Ms. Mona Parikh. Yes. And Mr. William Strickland. Yes. Okay, great. With Chairman that, Bush. I will turn it back over. And Rob Bush. Chairman oh, Bush. Rob Bush. Yeah, oh, Rob actually, Bush. Rob, I didn't, I didn't even hear. I appreciate that. Um, right. Can I mark you present? And how would you present like to vote yes. on the approval of the minutes? Yes, thank you. Okay, great, thank you, Rob. Appreciate it. All right, great. We will go to the next slide. Um, so the person that 
has the 302-528-8669. If you could please um, change your telephone number to your name so that we can get uh, an accurate um, attendance of who is on the, the call. That would be great. Thank you. So we start out all of our presentations with, with our mission, excellence in transportation, every trip, every mode, every dollar, and every one. Next slide, please. And we also, for the safety slide, um, we always show this for uh, just to keep awareness um, of what's happening out on our road base. So we are down overall um, from, we're down about 13% compared to what we were last year. But unfortunately, we do have our vulnerable users um, is, has been up uh, quite dramatic for pedestrian, bike, and motorcycles. Um, so, so we just have a normal PSA to please tell, please have you and your family um, just be aware of the, the, you know, of wearing your seatbelt. Don't be angry. Don't drive distracted um, and just feel fair. Um, and then to that end, we are we also launched our our big safety campaign of become a hero towards zero. Um, and that is to uh, to create awareness. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen billboards out. Um, it's been on the side of our dark buses, but it really is to create awareness. And if anybody um, does want to sign the safety pledge, we do have extras there um, to just help um, promote safety. Next slide. So we'll, we'll, this is just our normal one of the mill things that, that, that we don't normally do. Um, so the amount awarded to date, we have had 29 awards. Um, we are at about $50 million to, I don't think so, um, about $50 million awarded. So that's a, a tremendous number. Um, and then over 11, thousand jobs created and maintained and then currently available for um for this postman is a combo of the new fy25 the, the new fiscal sorry we deal it in a lot of acronyms um the new fiscal year 25 funding of five million dollars put towards from DelDOT, five million from the Department of State, um, so at ten million per year, plus um, the amounts that have been forfeited from one or two previous grantees. So, um, and yeah, so that's what I have there. So, just a so not shot. Oh, always want to keep that running total just for everyone's sake. Next slide, please. So I won't, won't go too far into this, but this is just a good like tracking um, of what has been complete, what is in progress, and what has not so dark to yes. so, um, all the way from round one to round 10. So if you want to form that slide and then um, just, you know, of various in progress. So that's good. We know it takes a while to get projects up and running, running, running and off the ground. Um, so that's been great. And then next slide. Yeah. And then that's round nine and round so thank you so much for that.
Okay, so to get on to the new business, you want to advance that slide. Thank you. Okay, so KSI, KSIP1 card, um, our friends are back again. So they were in round three, um, they came back from round six, round eight, and they are in um, this round as well. So just to familiarize everyone again, this is a, uh, a, a stuckware housing project that is right off of um, Route 13 and 273, um, right near the new Castle Airport. Um, just an FYI, the for the council's um, uh, information, we do have representatives from ASIP One Picard. We have we have Sean Tucker. We have James Smith, Chris Gallian. Yes. Do do we have anyone else from the? Yeah, Scott Parker uh, from Verdantis is here, just in, in, in case there's some engineering questions. Okay. Uh, Wally Rushdan just arrived, who's been involved with the project. And last but not least, Mike Hagan, who's the project manager. In case there's questions, we just wanted to have the whole team here. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, next slide. So, just a reminder. Um, so, K K KSIP was awarded 2.5 million in round three. Um, they had an estimate of 90 jobs. Um, the agreement signed in November of 2021, the site got sold, they reassigned it um, in for approval in round six. Uh, they also received a 2.9 million in change increase in round eight. That was their first amendment um, with the condition that they have a ten tenant within one year. Um, so due to some project please of an artesian relocation FAA approval um, that has been a, a very challenging um, aspect of the project. Um, so that has stalled completion of the improvement. So just a reminder, full movement site entrance on old churchman's with um, a dead, Kate right hand turn lane, a bike lane right in and right out onto their um, from, from, from their entrance on 273. They actually have two entrances on 273. They have a full movement site entrance on the card. That's a new roadway, um, a new signal at the intersection of churchmen's and the card shared use paths, bike lanes, drainage improvements. Um, so, and they're also doing a uh, compa companion bus stops out on 273. So a very large project. Um, if you can go to the next slide. So we just wanted to include some progress photos um, as you can see the building is up. Um, they are um, well into the well into the work done um, for the roadway improvements. Um, so next slide. So the there are two requests as part of his round, and that's going to be two separate votes. So the first one is that the applicant has requested that the term for the first amendment, so so that uh, two point five million, they're asking that 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 be extended by one year due to the uh, issues with the FAA, the issues 
with the water the pine um, and and again the applicant and, and their representatives are here to explain to clarify if it if the council has any questions on that so that's the first vote um, and then the second vote is the request for progress payments so the um let, 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 I'm sorry, let, let me just buy it back for a second. So the amendment, the, the 2.5 million was the, was yeah. the, oh yeah, 2.9. 2.9, thank, thank you, I keep saying two. That's okay. Thank, that, thank you, Susie. The 2.9 did include the, um, about almost 900,000 for the water line re relocation. So that's just, Good to keep in mind that relocation is tied to that first amendment. And then the second request, again, is the interim progress payments. So the, um, so there are, there's basically like the construction work um, is three separate ways. It's Picard, it is Old Churchman's, and the, it's Old Churchman's Road, and then it's Churchman's Road. So we do have an update um, from the applicant. So the, the completion of Old Churchman's Road and Route 13 is supposed to be completed in August. The water line relocation is going to be completed hopefully in October and then the balance of the rest of the project so Picard, Churchman's um, Road and Route 273 is going to be finished up in December. So the request is for a, a for an progress payments on um, a few of these activities. Activities. Um, and what we have, let's see, can you go to the next slide? I'm, I'm just curious. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, if you could go back. So, the um, what we have been doing normally at Dell Dot is in an effort to try to be good stewards and good neighbors knowing sometimes that so just let me just back up for a sec normally your tiff payments are done at final inspection so the the our final inspection teams go out they check all of the transportation elements uh you get a sign off from our our inspection group and then maintenance and operations sends you something saying, thank you very much. All of the elements have been complete. We are going to now accept this road or the improvements into our state maintenance program. That letter normally triggers the payment for TIF. And since there is a, as you can see with all of the orange barrels there is a lot of things you know g g going on and we do know that we have a finite amount of um of uh of so that for our final inspections because it's not only a final inspection for punch list items but it's also a ada inspection so any kind type of sidewalk shared use path cross walks plus pads have to be a a, 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 a ada compliant so it, in an effort to try to expedite your payments, we are, um, we ha have been looking at using the safety inspection. So for a project that has, um, that like has been closed or a new road, okay, we would, um, we would do a safety inspection first. So our safety group would go out, they check to make sure the guard rail was good, that the signal was working properly. That's done in advance of the final inspection. So we were, we feel confident that if a 
applicant can get to the safety inspection um, where the road is usable to the public because that is part of um, you know the whole purpose of the grant is that it is to, for public use. Then we thought as a, a recommendation only to the council, you uh, we would welcome you know all of the you know uh, um, discussion of about it, but we were thinking that if they got to either a safety inspection or the water line relocation was good and got s s signed off that generally like a 50% payment would be done at a could be done at that that time and then at the at the after the final inspection when everything's done and dusted they would get the run painting. So that's just a little bit of a background as to what we since there for these larger projects that have multiple roadways, multiple elements, you know, it is probably not going to be applicable for a project that just has an entrance and a turn lane and some sidewalks and like a bus but so that probably wouldn't re recommend that, but based on the progress payments that were approved, that was LPC. They had four separate roads. They had four separate um, inspections. So that the council approved payments on. And then the only, the, the only other applicants that have asked for progress payments are the city of Wilmington challenge slash light action. And that, um, that was talked about at the last round and it, um, the, you know, the, what had been, you know, discussed was that, that, uh, requested did not get approved, but it was brought forth that the applicant could come back and you know not include engineering, but actually include elements that were like in the ground. So utility relocations that that you know had been done, and then possibly like phasing in of the construction improvements. I know that that was a ton, but I just wanted to kind of set the stage for what our, you know, our Del Dot thoughts were on, um, you know, finding a balance between trying to give the, uh, the awarded amount to the applicants, but also making sure that the transportation improvements are being built. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to the chair um, for any, Discuss, so we're, we're going to do talk amongst the council, and then if there's any executive session, then any public comment, and then the two votes. Okay, and with that, I will open it up for any member who has discussion, comments, or would like to talk to the uh, to builder. Yeah, Representative Bush, this is Senator Walsh. Yours. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a quick question. Um, I know the site well. I've seen a lot of activity out there over the course of probably the last two years. Um, I know they're requesting progress payments, and uh, I'm assuming, I, I guess the first question, is there, I heard what Pam was saying as far as the safety piece of the road work. There's four different roads coming into that site, so I personally probably don't have a an issue with the progress payments. Um, just a question, when they do submit those payments, I'm assuming, is there a schedule of values that uh, the team is looking at um, as far as the those progress payments are concerned? Does anybody know that answer? Sure. Um, yes, Senator Walsh. We have the, like, the cost breakdowns of what the cost for each of those road segments are um they they are they 
would be for the in the ground improvements. Um, so we would work with that uh, grantee to kind of verify that all of the, um, all of like we would normally do that all, all of those elements are in the ground working well. Um, the part, it, if we do, if we do go by something like 50% paid or 75% paid or whatever the, the council decides on, we could um, work, work that out internally. And that would be a report that like we could put in for the next meeting to like kind of show you what the disbursement amounts were. But just a reminder, the um, they can't exceed the grantee, the, they can't exceed the award amount in total. But I would just remind, uh, just a reminder that the partial, the interim payments would be kind of contingent on ex extending that first amendment right. because part of that work is in that first amendment funding. Right, correct, correct. And I, you know, I'm assuming that because I've seen this site out there, a lot of this work is is probably either is coming to conclusion or a lot of the work is probably done. Um, and as far as the 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 extension piece, I, I know another question out there that I would have. I I saw the reasoning um, why the delay is probably needed, and I would also assume that due to the fact that it's close to an airport. Wow. Uh, with everything we've done as far as PFAS, um, is there issues with that as well? I would assume that that would probably be a may be causing a delay as well. I didn't see anything in the report, but um, does anybody can anybody comment on that as far as the PFAS cleanup maybe causing portion of a delay there? Yeah, and I, I think uh, I know Mr. Tucker's here, and he might be able to address that for us. So uh, with that. If you're okay with that, Senator, I'm going to turn it over to him. Let him answer. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Representative Bush. Thank you for that question, Senator Walsh. Um, and your your instincts were um, certainly spot on. Um, I can confirm that there, while there's been no PFAS or PFAS located on this property, there certainly has been reports from DENREC that were made public in the past about PFAS in the area um, surrounding the airport. Um, I can share with the council that there is one major tenant who is doing some additional due diligence in the area because of that factor. Again, not that it was found on our property, but because when they become aware of it, when they became aware of that as part of their due diligence, um, they um, decided they needed to look at that more closely. And in fact, this particular potential tenant has put out a national policy, we've recently learned, that for any site that could touch PFAS or be around PFAS, um, they want to look at that more closely. So that certainly contributed to delay with that particular tenant opportunity, um, but we don't see that as a permanent thing, uh, but it certainly has caused a temporary delay, sir. Yeah, and that's that's good to know. And, and, and um, this particular tenant, can I ask, is, is this, particular tenant still one of the tenants or the tenant that's possibly on the hook for this project still looking there, at you may ask um it's a large e-commerce tenant i think i i did identify him at the last meeting and it, it was amazon right um right. and they do since that meeting this national policy as we understand it has been developed and they're being cautious like i think any good corporate citizen would be um across the country um, mm -hmm. There is another tenant that has been interested, uh, Pepsi Cola. Um, I can share with you as well. Um, so we are certainly um, doing our best to work with them in any concerns. That is Amazon as their policy sort of evolves. And again, it's a countrywide policy. It's possible that half the sites they're looking at somehow touch or maybe related to a PFAS situation. We just don't know but we are dedicated to working with them and others like Pepsi who may continue to be interested. Um, so um, that is certainly one of the delays that 
has contributed to why we're back um, that delayed a direction we were heading in, particularly with Amazon many months ago. Um, I can also share that the FAA final approval on some easements that had been granted over 10 years ago um, finally came through. That was in the past few months, and that was critical so that we could start certain work in certain areas. Uh, and I want to thank DelDot, by the way, uh, for working with us closely on some of the road improvements that touch these easements, because without their help, quite frankly, I don't know that we'd have that FAA approval just yet. Um, so that's been extremely important. That just um, that approval from the FAA just came about in the past few months, um, which is now allowing us to move forward with a lot of the work, a lot more work that you're seeing at the site um, today in these right away areas or these eased areas. Um, and lastly, uh, I just wanted to share for those interested that the market has evolved uh, a bit in, in the direction of more trailer parking. What we're learning is folks interested in large sites like this need more trailer parking or want more trailer parking. And once we learned that a few months ago, we immediately began negotiations with uh, DRBA um, and Mr. Cook's team, which have been wonderful to work with. Um, and we're trying uh, and negotiating a lease next door just to the west of, um, of our new road, Picard Road, where we would be able to add under the lease additional trailer parking. Um, so my point being, my client, when it learns of changes in the market, which are not unusual, um, change, change in need, change in circumstances, we try to react very quickly um, to respond to that. And so we're efforting that too, um, to make the site more appealable with additional trailer parking that far exceeds code, uh, because that's what the market is calling for right now. Right. Well, I, I thank you for that. That's very helpful. Uh, appreciate the intel. And um, like I said, as, as this project evolves, I know they've sunk a lot of their own money into this. Yes, uh, sir. Uh, yeah. 60 they, million. We want to see a tenant get in there. That's for sure. And we've sunk a lot of money from the state level, too. So uh, uh, looking forward to moving this forward. Hopefully, I know the anytime you're dealing with the FAA or the railroad, um, as we know, as legislators, <laughs> things things uh, kind of get jammed up and take time. So good to think, good to see things are uh, moving in the right direction. Th thank you, Senator. And and I can share, including land cost, uh, about one hundred sixty million dollars is, mm -hmm. is the uh, is spend here to date. Um, and so the contributions from the state and through TIF are critical to help offset some of those costs, certainly, and make us competitive in the marketplace with other states when it comes to rent. This all adds up and is very important, especially with the interest carry that also comes with that once these jobs are completed. Everything is out to contract. To your point, all this work, you're seeing it happening. And we have anticipated all being finished up December, maybe January, because all these things are under contract and my client is obligated, certainly, to those contractors to make payments. Great, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have a question, actually, and this relates back to the conditions that we had. So I, I hear you talking about tenants um, or potential tenants, uh, but uh, I, I want some clarification. Number one, you spoke of Amazon, and I believe you spoke of Pepsi. Uh, there's actually going to be multiple clarifications I need on this, actually. Um, are you looking at them being sole tenants? If so, uh, there is the condition that uh, you're supposed to get a tenant within one year of August 31st. And so that clock is still running. Uh, and I think that we would have to make any payments condition upon you getting a tenant. Uh, second of all, um, are we talking about Pepsi Cola? Are we talking about Pepsi Ventures? Are we talking about Pepsi Bottling Ventures? Who are we talking about when you say Pepsi? Because I know Pepsi has a lot of different things going on with distribution, and they oftentimes have subcontractors who bottle for them. And this seems like more of a location of a bottling venture. So who are we really talking about here? Um, and how close are you into locking up these tenants if, again, if you're looking at multiple tenants? But I don't, I've never seen Amazon do a multiple tenant thing, so... Um, I don't know. <laughs> so some clarification there. Uh, certainly, doctor. Thank you. Thank you for those questions. So the two tenants I mentioned are tenants 
that we have been negotiating with currently or in the past. Pepsi was a, a bit a bit ago. Amazon was original, came back. And so those are ongoing. There is no signed lease. Um, and right now we would anticipate this probably being a one user uh, location, but that could change. What we've learned, and I think this goes in part to the heart of your questions, uh, and we learned this from CBRE, CBRE, who's the broker marketing this, as well as experience with other folks in this business, is about 80% of this market is built on spec, uh, probably 80% plus. And the reason is what the market has learned, unless these buildings are built when the need exists, um, you, are, you run the risk of being skipped over for another location that has the building built. So I think in analyzing this, it's important to understand that this um, area of the market is heavily dependent on spec building because it needs to be. So we're competing against New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Maryland as well. Um, so we, the phrase build it and they will come, it turns out is quite true when it comes to warehousing. Um, and or employment, because sometimes you'll have an employer that wants to come and you can easily convert, well, maybe not easily, but you can convert warehousing uh, into an employment location for a business, for example. We, we hear from those types of tenants at other sites. Um, for example, Dragonfly uh, was one that was interested in another site that we've had in front of you called Blue Diamond. They ultimately went to Middletown, as you may recall. Um, so no tenant has signed currently. We have been delayed for the reasons I had mentioned earlier in pursuing some of the, of the tenants interested in this. Um, and also, sir, recall that a year ago, we just had barely gotten out of the ground with the building. Um, our client has taken a tremendous risk, um, and that's the business they're in, risk-taking, but they have taken a risk by putting out the money uh, to date about 160 million to build this building. Um, once they pay these contractors, which is ongoing, uh, many of them, um, or several of them, are, are certainly local folks that we've uh, worked with and, and um, put out bids with that are engaged or have been engaged in the past building the building. These monies become due and payable. So we're about to enter um, an interest carry mode at, at the 8 9% range that you see in the market. Um, that is very concerning. And so we are asking the council um, today to please consider the fact that a large portion of this infrastructure needs to be repaired or updated with or without us. We are funding a lot of existing outdated um, infrastructure, including the water lines, by the way, that don't just service us by any means, and also roadways improvements that are needed for the general public. That was part of the uh, qualification component to this. So we are asking the council to please consider lifting the tenant condition um, for the extension um, so that we can have the money available to pay for the work that we're going to provide evidence has been completed or will be completed in the, in the very near future. And certainly not before it passes the safety inspection that Pam mentioned earlier, and then ultimately a final inspection uh, that Pam had mentioned earlier. Um, and also one other, just, just to we're all uh, clear, it is my understanding, and, and this is, I believe, in writing, that the original 2.5 million grant was not conditioned on a tenant. It was the additional 2.9 um, that, that was uh, conditioned originally a year ago before the building was really you know, coming out of the ground. Um, and before it was, I think, 100% clear that this work would continue, regardless of whether the economy changed or the market changed. Both of things, of course, have happened to some degree. Um, so that now that you can see the buildings built, it was actually in the pictures, the landscaping is in. We're really just down to the roads, doctor, um, and the artesian water line, again, that benefit the, the area, not just us. And so um, that's where we are today. And we are in front of you certainly asking for an extension uh, because of the market, because of the, the PFAS issue I mentioned, because of the FAA approvals I mentioned, um, and um, asking the board to, you know, to, to work with us on that. I, I'd also like to just say one more thing, and, and, and um, I'm happy to follow up if I missed anything that you uh, you've inquired about. 
this same entity rolls up into a larger entity that owns um, the Blue Diamond location just south of here. Prudential Insurance is the predominant owner. And this is part of a REIT. Um, and fortunately, they have the assets because of it being a publicly traded uh, REIT to make these kinds of investments, even when a market is a little thin right now. And so there are another four buildings um, that they plan on building in spec, on spec, investing in Delaware, putting people to work. Um, the total sum of this site, which to date is $160 million. And when you add Blue Diamond and those additional four buildings, which have been approved, eclipses over $700 million of work, of construction that will happen in our state because of the commitment that Prudential has made here in our state. And um, that is equivalent to the port project. The port project is estimated at about $650 million. This eclipses that or is certainly in the same ballpark. So um, I just want to mention that because I think it's important to understand the scale of this, the risk associated with this, um, the money that's being spent by the private sector um, as part of this commitment you know, to Delaware um, and, and what, what it takes to build these types of things, these buildings on spec. And it's Pepsi bottling. I'm sorry, doctor. It's Pepsi bottling that we were negotiating with some time ago. Okay. Yeah, that, that would be more in line with what they do. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments from members? Okay. That, um, should we go to vote now? Yeah, if, if we could go. Oh, sorry, was that the public comment? Oh, yes, public comment. Yes, we, uh, yes, we were just checking on the executive session. Don't think that's applicable here for now. This discussion, so it'd be public comment. All right, well then, is there any public comment on the matter before us, the KSIP? One card LLC project. Anybody in the room? Public comment? No. Nope. Anybody online? Public comment? Okay. So the two. So, so there. So everyone understands their actual. And I, the second one might need to talk about. So what we are looking for here today is obviously uh, we're going to have two motions, hopefully, and. You know, the first one is a motion that the term for the funding increase be extended by an additional year, uh, which would extend out to August 31st, 2025. And the second one, which they both need to be done separately, is the applicant has requested interim progress payments. I don't know if there's any conditions put on that or not, but that is second motion. I don't know if they want to do that. So with that, I guess the first thing we're looking for, is there a motion that the term for the funding increase be extended for an additional year expiring on August 31st, 2025. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and second was from Dr. Johnson, I believe, correct? No. 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 Mona, Mona oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, and with that, we have a motion and a second. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna call the roll on that. Um, Chair Representative Bill Bush, yes. Senator Jack Walsh, yes. Dr. Cornelia Johnson, yes. Dr. Martin Nunley, yes. Uh, Mona Parik, yes. William Strickland, yes. Rob Book. You still us? Yeah, he dropped. I think he dropped off. Dropped off. Okay. All right. Having received the required number of votes, uh, the motion passes. Okay. We will now move on to the second part of this application. Uh, which deals specifically with a request for in-progress payments. And again, I don't know if there's a specific way this should be worded, 
but we'll leave that for someone. And I don't know if you want to comment and give us some suggestions or. Sure. Yes. So we, um, so in the past, as I said, the only other progress payments that, that have been done were the separate road ways for the final inspection. So um, with this being that, being it that it looks like all, like all of the work will be done, like Sean had said, probably in December or January. Um, we had uh, the the options that we thought being held out transportation folks um, would be if when the completion of the Wahed or line is done, because normally that's an independent. Um, uh, permit. Yes, it, 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 it's an independent permit. So that would get signed off independently of the roadway. So we had, um, you know, so it, it, it is at the uh, le, uh, le, le, measure, obviously, of the council. But um, it once that is signed off on, then we would feel comfortable being that that would be in place. Um, so that payment could be done in full for, for that 900 some odd thousand. Um, and then the other elements that have separate level in, two inspections, when the safety inspection is done on the, the, those, i.e. when the roadway um, you know, is open to traffic um, and the signal is working and the card is open, um, then we had, uh, you know, just bumped around with possibly like 50% being paid, but it, it, yeah, you know, that would only be our, our engineering thought process. <laughs> um, and then at the final inspection, Inspection, when you know when everything's buttoned up and everything, that then that remainder for those three roadways would be fully paid up to the amount. The so 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 obviously there's certain limitations that Delta is thinking about putting in bonds, I guess, in the payment. So. And I guess in in thinking about it in a simplistic way, and you know, and I, I am looking for a motion from the members. Um, but perhaps maybe a, a motion for interim progress payments with limitations as determined by Delta. Yeah. Does that, does that work for members or that works? And if, if someone can make that motion or? I make that motion. Well, I'd like to add the proviso that it doesn't exceed the amount of the original funding as well. The the doctor not only just to confirm the uh, the grand amount of the two point nine. I thought the the two point five, but I because the two point nine is 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 provisioned on them getting an attend attendant, and so I think it's a lot cleaner if we just do it with the two point five. But anyway, that those were my thoughts. And maybe that we should discuss that. Um, well, we do, we do have a motion on the floor right now, currently, um, that Mr. Strickland has already made that was looking for a second that would just as, you know, again, inter progress payments um, with limitations as determined by Dell Dot. And, you know, I, I guess that's something that we put there. And, uh, you know, if this motion fails, then we can go back and redo it as well. But, and I don't know if members. Second. Okay, so so we have a motion from uh, Mona, and I. You now, are you going to be okay with that, Doctor um, Nunley? I guess or no. Um, I, I thought we should discuss discuss it before we do it because we're making a motion, and we can if if we want to say okay, that is the only motion that we're making, but. I was thinking that we could uh, amend the um, the motion, but you know, <laughs> I, I mean that that those were my feelings anyway. Okay. okay. Well, 
Oh, we, we have a motion and a second before us, and I, I will, yeah, I will allow for some discussion right now in regards to that with other members if their thoughts on this as well. So, um, anyone have any thoughts on that addition limitation to the two point five? Seeing none, <laughs> so yeah. so we yeah. so we, we have a motion before us, and I will proceed uh, with it the way it is. And again, it is a motion to allow for interim progress for payments of uh, limitations determined by Del Dot. And again, it, it's something where if Del Dot wanted to go there, they could actually limit the amount as well. We're kind of giving them a little discretion on that. Um, and with that, I will take a vote on it. Um, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Chair Representative Bill Bush. Yes. Senator Jack Walsh. Yes. Uh, Dr. Cornelia Johnson. Yes. Uh, Dr. Martin Nunley. Yes. Uh, Madam Parikh. Yes. William Strickland. Yes. Rob Book, you there? Still off? Okay, appreciate it. All right, well, that motion uh, has passed, received enough votes. Uh, thank you, everyone, and we will move forward with the next project. All right, great. Thank you so much. And, and um, Pam, I'm, I'm very sorry to interrupt, but just for, for clarification, if I could ask one question, um, because it, it, it obviously would affect a um, variety of things on our end. Um, is it my understanding, Chairman, that the motion passed and that DELDOT would have the discretion in terms of the full amount, the 2.9 and the 2.5 in terms of time. Yeah, it's limitations within Delta, and it was kind of as they laid out before. It sounds like they might have restrictions in terms of, you know, percentage done is was kind of discussed here. Yes, so. but the full, but the full amount, the 2.5 yes, and the 2.9. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Council. Um, so, this is a, a chart we normally. Uh, based on the 29 it's um and the great thing is being that oh, and i'm so, so, sir uh, i'm sorry in the gray do you mind signing in just it, yes thank you okay great thank you sorry dude okay um so just a great thing 80 percent of the grants um oh, are uh, a, a very good um Deal at about ten thousand per per job. So just just wanted to sh share that we like numbers and that that that's it. So we just wanted to share that. And then so the next one is the new applicant. Um, we have one new applicant. S C M C. You guys are your acronyms. Um, S C M C Long Neck L L C. Um, so this is in. Hills grow um, right off of Long Neck Road and Route 24. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, just a rendering and the site plan um, of what that would look like, and, and I'll go a bit more into what the actual facility is. But we, all, all of this is in your binder. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, 32 houses square foot office building by um, occupied by BB. Um, we do have Megan and Michael Blick here for the uh, to answer any questions or provide any info that you would need. Um, so it is a primary care facility um, with a family med medicine residence facility for for um, teaching space. So this is a a new type of um, we've had a bunch of healthcare facilities come in, but this is the first one that does have that uh, that that space um, that <coughs> residency space. So the, the site does fall in 
to the uh, population over age of 664, and then within two miles of the EPA's 90th and 95th per percentile for unemployment. Um, it, it is in level two for the soothing so strategy. So one and two are the areas that the Office of State Planning has um, deemed for growth. TIF's scope of work um, uh, is pretty so, so straightforward, full movement site entrance, widening of long neck road uh, to create a, a protected left and right hand turn lane, sidewalk, and a bus shelter. Um, so the TIF scope not only includes the engineering, but the construction and the con Contingency. So 20 new jobs and uh, 24 maintain public and more serve uh, Senator Kennedy John. So the applicant is is asking uh, for 500 and how about 544,462 dollars and 60 cents. Um, so Andrew or Joanne from DSB, do you mind um, unmuting and just do the DSB financial update fee? Sure. Um so SCM Long Neck provided us with audited financial statements from their parent company, which is um, BB Medical Center. Um, they provided them for 21 through 23. And we also received the personal tax returns from the owners. Uh, no items of concern were noted with that financial analysis. They also provided us um, a business license and a certificate of good standing. Um, and no major labor laws were violated um, during our comprehensive search. Uh, after reviewing the financials and using the implant software, it's estimated that the successful implementation of this project would increase state and local taxes collected in the amount of $540,000, $540,577 annually. Great, thank you so much. Sure. Awesome. So again, doing our normal performance, Measures, uh, right hand and left hand turn lanes. Uh, that they are also provided in some cross access, some internal access with adjacent offices, so that um, so you don't have to go out onto Long Neck Road just to get in to the next parcel. Um, again, the transit so that. Um, and th then you have the breakdown. So you have 12 jobs that um, at, at the highest tax bracket, two at the second highest, three, 20, and seven. Um, so that is it on the explanation. Uh, so Chair, again, the owners are here. If, if the, you or the council has any questions or concerns, about project this with that. And with that, I turn it over to any members if they have any questions or comments or would like to speak to someone. Seeing none? Yeah, well, I, I look, I'm going to say this is a no brainer for me, but. I don't know how the rest of the people feel about it. So I have not. Thank you, Doctor. Appreciate it. Well, with that, um, to turn it over to public comment. I don't think we need an executive session. Any public comment? Seeing none, uh, is there a motion? To recommend an award to SCMC Long Neck LLC. So moved. Uh, so moved. Second. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably going to get it wrong. I'll be able to copy with it. Amelia did the motion. Um, for second. 
Okay. All, All right. right. So we have a motion and a second. And with that, I will call the roll. Chair Representative William Bush. Yes. Uh, Senator Jack Walsh. Yes. Dr. Cornelia Johnson. Yes. Dr. Martin Nunley. Doctor. Nunley. I, I muted myself instead of unmuting. Yeah, yes. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Mona Parikh? Yes. William Strickland? Yes. Our uh, book's still out there. Okay. With that, receiving the required number of votes, uh, the motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Truly appreciate it. Um, Thank you. And, and that is, in terms of our, our voting right now, um, That are that's all the votes we have for today. However, uh, one of the things that is on the agenda is we were going to talk about uh, our employment standard guidelines. And with that, I'm going to turn it over. Yes. So um, just a reminder, um, these employment standard guidelines were adopted by the council in July of last year. Um, so they specifically try to lay out what the, what the um, interpretation of what the so specifically explaining what direct, significant, number, permanent, quality, full time. And then we had also expanded that to try to give guidance on uh, what development types would generally be excluded during the, um, you know, the council to have some flexibility in in their uh, in their this uh, 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 on like specific development projects, and then we had also put on a lower priority development types things like private real estate pensions, um, projects where you know and, and, and this where I identified and didn't create a significant number of direct permanent quality full-time jobs. So that being said, um, the, at the last me, 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 meeting, there was some discussion on um, having the council revisit and have a talk about um, not only what these guidelines are, but also rec possibly recommending um, an expiration time frame for the board just to help the TIF grantees to get into the agreements faster um, than three years. <laughs> so um, that, and to not, the, the new, Negotiations on the agreements, you know, th that has sometimes gone back, back and forth. We're pretty strict on that. They're a template and, and such. So just wanted to um, open it up for the council if they did want to, to speak more on the guidelines, if there's any recommendations that the council would like to possibly change up. And then that being said, um, we'll document all of that. Um, and then if there are any proposed changes that those would be brought up at the next council meeting for a vote to like change the amended, uh, to change the approved guidelines. So that said, I will turn it over to you if anybody wants to. So any Council member have any comments or thoughts? Yeah, if I may, Mr. Chair. Uh, under the generally excluded development types, uh, we received a submission for a project in Lincoln uh, that would have contained a Wawa. Uh, I thought and still feel that that was a very compelling uh, proposal. Uh, I can appreciate the need for guidance on these type of excluded developmental types, but 
I would argue that we as a council should have more discretion and staff more discretion to look at things and not have them excluded just by nature of being a convenience store, a gas station, hospitality, residential, et cetera. Um, so I would advocate that we consider amending the generally excluded development types. Any other thoughts, members? Yes. Yeah, so what, what would the amendment look like? Uh, Senator, the amendment, from my perspective, would look at we would view each as a, on a case by case basis and not automatically exclude uh, a submission based upon its industry or type. Gotcha. Yeah, that's what I was going to say as well. I mean, I think everything <clears throat> I see the exclusions in there and I think everything it should be case by case because things different in different areas and. There may be a convenience store that brings in another strip center, right? Um, so I think I would agree with that as far as we should definitely look at things uh, in those cat categories where on a case-by-case -case basis. And, and I, there's a part I agree with that. Um, oh, you know, I, I, uh, and I'll, I'm sorry, Doc, I, I missed you there. But the, you know, the point of it is I, I live in Western Kent County and in Western Kent County, we really don't have so much business commercial. You bring a, a rural farms out there, or you bring a convenience store out there, that's a big deal out there. That's jobs and people who don't always have access to the road. So I think there's a part I do agree with you, and I, I appreciate it. I think each area is different. So there is a uniqueness to where that location is and how it might impact that community there. And I'll, I'll stop there. And I, I apologize, doctor. I didn't mean to cut you off. Doctor, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, what I was going to say is, I. I'm kind of in favor of these um, restrictions, but I I agree that there should be exceptions, especially if these types of activities will bring in future development or are going to be potentially the anchors for additional development. And so uh, I, I would be in favor of saying putting a, except when these uh, uh, particular activities will be uh, uh, necessary for uh, future development. Um, but just to, because some of these things, I mean, it, it's going to get kind of nitpicking and uh, it's not, some of these things, it's just not going to be, I think, worthy of us considering this, consider, this is the state's money that we're spending. Um, because uh, what, what's to stop someone from saying, okay, I'm going to build two houses here, and uh, they get funding for it. I mean, it's not going to be any jobs created, so it would be kind of uh, counterproductive. So uh, so, so let, let's keep with the original mission, but let, let's grant some exceptions. Okay. So anyway, those are my thoughts. And I, and I, and I guess... Yeah, I'm sorry, I wanted to, but I mean, to a certain extent, you know, and obviously we did have a, a Wawa location brought before us. So it was able to come before us. Now, you know, whether or not, you know, the negatives that we put a policy in there is one thing, but, you know, there, there have been in the past, I know there was a World Farms actually that was attempting to come before. They never quite even made it before us. So I, I think, you know, we have at least allowed some to occur here to come before us, but. But, but I do appreciate everything you're saying, Doctor. I think there has to be that uniqueness, either bringing more development to an area or also, like I said, I, I refer to Western Camp County. You, you put something out there. It's a big deal. Like, you know, we, there's not stuff out there. It helps people, the whole community. So anyway, that I appreciate that. Mr. Chairman, if I may, two things. Um, Mr. Strickland. We handcuff staff a bit in their ability to recommend a project that is in the generally excluded classification. So I, I think we would have to figure out how we allow an exception to be brought forward. And much like you, Representative Bush, um, you being familiar with Western Kent County, I'm very familiar with Lincoln. I grew up in Milford. That, that Wawa project is a game changer for that particular intersection and that economy south of Milford. 
And I, I think we have time. And I, I think, you know, we brought this topic up and I'm, you know, I'm sure you know, there's something we can probably think about in the next couple months to kind of work uh, the policy a little bit. So. Yeah, and, and I think with DelDot and DSB, we can try to, you know, help in any way we can to, you know, if there's a, a way to, even if it's on in the application of, you know, if there are future development, if they know of future, I'm not sure how really to quantify that, but like, like Mr. Shuklin said, it is it, it, any, any help on the staff end to be able to try to, you know, because our job is to help you and pr provide as much information to the, the council as we possibly can. Um, so, so yeah, maybe, maybe some refining of that. Were there also, ex besides the generally excluded, would, is there any uh, council on like the full-time part, the, the quality, like the 35,000 or above um, the healthcare benefits? We, we try to emulate as much as we possibly can with the Department of Sudates, Sud, Sudrat Fund, just because it's, it's an economic development fund as well, um, but I didn't know if if that was anything that you all wanted to talk about. Thoughts from members? If it's any consolation, I do like the thirty-five thousand uh, because you know we're, we're talking about providing living wages. And so, and that, that is about uh, looking at studies that have been done, you know, in, in this type of region, that would be considered a, uh, a living wage. So, um, so I, I, I'm in favor of it. How about that? Um, I appreciate, appreciate the discussion and and then you can go to the next slide. Yeah. So I don't think any executive session. So the next one would be any public comment on that, please. And if somebody does have public public comment, if you can just say your name just for the minutes. And Pam, are we gonna time them? Um I don't I well, let's just say let's just see how, five minutes just five in minutes. case. Okay. <laughs> sure. Okay. And uh, yeah. You state your name, uh, record. All right, my name is Robert Whittick. Uh, I'm with DSM Commercial Real Estate. I want to thank you for your time today. I also want to thank the, the um, commission for taking some initiative as it relates to the standards of applicable projects for TIF grants. As you all know, we were the ones that applied in Lincoln. And um, I think that if you look at the applicability of some of these applications, I've sat through just two of these meetings now, and I can tell you that some of the applications that have come before you didn't blatantly meet the standards that were set forth in that criteria. However, I think all of them warranted the money, frankly. I think that they all are ultimately job creators. Um, I would be broader probably in my spectrum of acceptable projects because I think Today's a great example of the industrial project that um, is in Newcastle. While it doesn't have a tenant, which didn't comply, um, it still will have a tenant and create a sig significant number of jobs. So I think that's a great investment in the community. Um, there's a project up on 896 in Newark, similar. I knew they, I know they didn't have necessarily tenants for all the buildings at the time they got their grant. But ultimately, they brought those tenants, and, and I think it was a great benefit to the community. So I think ultimately what you're doing is, is really positive. It helps a lot of projects. The cost today for construction is, is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. To get these projects to hurdle is very difficult, and uh, programs like this are really beneficial. We were led to this program by, um, by uh, someone at DelDOT. We didn't know about it. With the absence of this, that intersection in Lincoln that's in failure, we're not getting approved. We're going to use half public and half private money to get it done. Um, so we're putting in, and um, we have significant inf information on tenants that are interested in Lincoln in that area, if indeed we get these improvements done. And I don't think any of it can get done without intersection improvements. So none of the tenants come without the intersection. The intersection comes, tenants will come. 
creating jobs, tax base, utility sold. And then I'll finish with this. I'll give you three or four examples of where Wawa brings business. Smyrna, Delaware, where I went to do a Wawa, just Wawa. We're going to have 300,000 feet there when we're done. 300 apartments. It's, it's significant. Georgetown, Delaware, Dennis went there to do, Dennis Silicato went to do one Wawa and he did two and two or three different applications. Camden, Delaware, Dennis went there to do a Wawa. Now there's apartments, there's retail. Delmar, Delaware, I went there just to do enough to do one Wawa. Now I have 70,000 foot of retail there. The number of jobs created by all of that is unbelievably significant. And I can tell you now, with, with certainty, 30 years of experience in this industry with a, with a great resume. If we get this done in Lincoln, as an example, you'll see that intersection thrive with a intersection that's now compliant. So this will be really beneficial to, to that particular situation and many situations like it going forward. So I thank you for your time today. Yeah. Anyone else? Anyone online? Thank you very much. Well, I guess we'll go to future meetings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if anybody wants to apply for the next round, the submission deadline is September 3rd. The next council meeting on November 14th. Um, and that is it. So I think it would just be the adjournment. <laughs> more generally, but is there a motion to adjourn? Move. Two second. Second. All in favor, just say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.